Mr. Ross. Yes, please. Good morning. A central consideration in this case is freedom of association. These cases ask whether law students can associate around shared religious beliefs in pursuit of educational, vocational, and professional goals. As an association that exists precisely for that purpose, my client, Christian Legal Fellowship, is directly affected by the answer to that question and submits that the answer must be yes. The law societies say, though, that to approve or to recognize such an association at Trinity would be contrary to the public interest because that association is exclusionary. Is there a difference between having the right to associate with co-religionists and having a right to have a law school? Justice Abella, we would suggest that having a law school is that right to associate with co-religionists. Well, every religion has it. Pardon me? Every religion has it. Uh, every, every association uh, has the right to come together to pursue educational and vocational goals. Yes. But that presupposes that the association is itself a religious practice. That's right. Okay, so I think, right. I, think, I think you're missing that step in the analysis. Well, the, in that regard, so I, I think maybe what's causing some of the discrepancy here is the assumption is that studying law is strictly a secular pursuit. And what Trinity is saying and what their governing documents and the legislation that incorporates Trinity says is that they exist to educate with an underlying philosophy and viewpoint that is Christian that they are integrating their religious views and values with their education for the purpose of equipping its members to live a religious life in their profession. And no one is quarreling with the curriculum or their ability to do that. I think that's a different question from whether the right to associate includes the right to have an exclusionary religious law school. So I would suggest that this court answered that question in 2001 and they framed the claim as one in part of freedom of association. They said there that the College of Teachers decision in effect prevented students from associating and freely expressing their religious beliefs to put them into practice and that the effect was to deny them an opportunity to carry out uh, a professional life because the affirmation of their religious beliefs and association and attendance at Trinity Western would deny them equal access to the profession. Would it matter if they were educating actuaries? I mean, actuarial science is uh, basically applied mathematics. Yeah, I think, again, what's missing here is the understanding that Trinity Western and its community, and frankly, what lawyers and members of Christian Legal Fellowship believe, which is whatever a vocation, it is a response to a spiritual calling that a spiritual calling and vocation isn't just limited to pastoring and ministering, but to any walk of life, to any profession, to any vocation. And uh, Justice uh, Campbell recognized that at the Nova, Scotia Court, uh, the Nova Scotia Supreme Court, where he said that religious educational institutions aren't limited to just teaching seminary and theology from a religious perspective, but to teach all uh, professions, all subjects from an underlying Christian perspective. And that's precisely what Trinity's statute mandates it to do. So the answer to Justice Rowe's question is it doesn't matter whether it's a law school, an actuarial school, a dental school, it is the same right. If there is evidence that there are sincerely held religious beliefs that the integration of one's faith and the study of a particular profession uh, are a means of exercising one's religious beliefs, putting into practice what they believe is a necessary uh, expression of their connection with the divine, then yes, that would apply to other professions as well, as it did in 2001 to the context of an educational program where the court said this is a religious association. This educational program is a means by which students come together and associate and pursue a religious way of life. We're getting well into the facts of the case, which I know we're supposed to avoid, but. Looking at the BC Court of Appeal decision, which recounted the record on this point, the claim of infringement, well, the claim of the right was cast differently, focusing on the covenant being an integral part 
of the religious life. It wasn't the carriage of, of the law school itself, but it was the covenant that was that was the manifestation of belief and itself a practice. That's how I always understood the claim That's, of right in this case. Do you understand what you're saying as consistent with that or as inconsistent with I that? I see it as consistent with that. I, see, I it as, see it as distinct. Well, it's distinct in that it's framing the claim as a Section 2D claim, which is, which is distinct from the Section 2A claim. Right. And, and the Section 2D claim is, well, let's look at how, how 2D has been framed by this court. In, in Mounted Police in paragraph 35, this court uh, referred to Justice Dixon's uh, articulation of freedom of association in the Alberta reference. And he described association as, at its core, protecting the right of individuals to determine and control the rules, mores, and principles which govern the communities in which they live. That is the community covenant. The community covenant is the articulation of the rules, mores, and principles which govern the community in which Trinity's graduates live and study. So I, you're right, Justice Brown, that this is uh, distinct from the, the 2A aspect. Um, but I, I would suggest that this is also a helpful means of looking at uh, this claim through the Section 2D lens. Thank you very much. Thank you.